stay focused, I'm not folding I'll upset you, cause I'm just too dangerous I'm dangerous, let's be honest Say no contest, take those comments For my concept, from the get-go I just get so dangerous, so dangerous I know most of you are here for the Kia Stinger review And that's coming in a bit What I like and what I don't like so much about the car But, first things first, I want to give you some context as to where we are We've driven two hours from London to come to one of the most beautiful places in the UK. So we're gonna roll a few clips which we got yesterday and then tell you a story. And then it's time to tell you what it's been like to live with this car for the last six As soon as you think that you safe, I'm still in the race. So don't fall asleep. Don't wait around. I'm on my way. I'm on the prowl. Don't fall asleep. I don't forget. Try to keep me out. I'm already in. So don't fall asleep. Oh my God, I will not falter. Show me honor. I feel my karma. If I have to, I'll show you I'm dangerous. So dangerous. Suit of armor. You can't harm us. Step in my light. I'll show you darkness. Beautiful, isn't it? This is a place called Old Harry Rock in southern England. But after we managed to get all these shots, the worst nightmare happened. We basically drove all this way to get some drone shots. Here are a few little preview clips, photos, which aren't very good quality because we actually lost the drone. I filmed a bit on my phone. The quality isn't great, but here's what happened. So the drone just hit that wall and it's falling there. Sorry? You need a boat. Incredibly disappointed because we drove to London for one drone shot. And the drone hit a cliff and went in the water. It's dark outside now pretty much. We've got about half an hour of light left. We've asked so many people. No one can help us, no one can get a boat. There's no way of climbing down. So the, the, drone, only, the drone's gone. The only thing we have left is beer. Beer. And, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> and maybe we can check on your phone to see the quality. Maybe, yeah. But I doubt it downloaded it. We're disappointed, it happens. So now we've grabbed some cameras and we're gonna try and find a canoe the next morning to see if we can paddle out to where we dropped the drone just to recuperate the memory card and try and get the footage. We can't find a canoe or a boat because it's not summer, none of the rentals are open, but the tide is way out right now. So hopefully they think we may be able to just walk up to the base of the cliffs and then maybe even just pick the drone up if it's still there. Wait, wait, wait. Shall we take the kayak? Yeah, she's saying we can take the kayak now. This is so hectic, guys. Change of plan in the end. A local's gonna lend us their kayak. I feel like this is a good time to ask you guys if you're not subscribed yet, to click that subscribe button. We're about to go canoeing, fully dressed. Find a drone which has been in the water for 12 hours in one of the places with the highest tidal range in the world. Seems very unlikely. We'll give it a go. Also, by the way, this is Oscar, who's been getting all of the footage. Amazing photographer. His Instagram is going to be down below. You can go check that out. We're heading out all the way to that tip over there. Oh, it's fresh. And it's definitely not warm. Here we go. Okay, so same timing. <laughs> We're getting some food and water. No, some water. Only some water. Everyone's so friendly. Friendly people. Thank you so much. Oh, no way. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is so nice. Well, we'll come say thank you on, on our way back. Ho hopefully with the, with the drone. We made it. Look how wet you are. You're soaking. It fell in here, in this area. Harder than I thought, eh? Yeah, this is not going to be very easy. I mean, I have to swim. There's no other way. Yeah. Which rock was it? Not this one, that one. It was there, and then it kind of went boom, and then fell like... There. Okay, can we maybe get... There? Without swimming to that side? No luck. No luck. We're not giving up. We're now going to try and go in and put the GoPros underwater to scan the whole sort of area and then watch the clips on the GoPros see if we can see anything underwater because from above we can't see anything the water is absolutely freezing that's very cold very cold my GoPro actually froze up the seaweed is about 
up until your waist and you obviously can't see what's at the bottom and it's just very slippery so you're stepping into sort of meter high seaweed there's no way of finding it well that was all very dramatic and right now the current issue we have is that our clothes are soaking wet so i'm doing this video believe it or not in my underwear time to give you my point of view on the kia stinger this is the gts and i very kindly had it lent to me by kia for six months so this is my six month review i've been driving this car every single day and i've got some pros and i've got some cons to it and we're going to start right now on the exterior i personally think this is a fantastic looking car five door hatchback it looks similar to the panameras or cls's that kind of sporty car look here are trying to get into a slightly more luxurious market with this car so it's got a twin turbo v6 pushing out 365 horsepower not 60 just under five seconds so it is very fast now then on the exterior what do i like what do i not like so i really like the swooping lines of this car this particular one in nardo gray lovely spec it's then got the Brembo brakes around front, which are gorgeous, these red calipers. But there are a few things. If you come a bit closer, I'll show you. Not a massive fan of all of the fake intakes. So you've got around front, you've got a few of these sorts of intakes on the side as well. They're just for the aesthetics of the car. Uh, now they look nice until, I don't know, it's just something that bugs me. I don't really like it if, it if it's fake, if it's not actually functional. You can see around front also you've got the adaptive cruise control system. Now that works great when you're in the car, but isn't the sexiest looking thing in the world. The car's actually quite dirty right now. Now that's on purpose because I've been driving this car so much. And as I say, it's my daily, which means it's going to get dirty. So I wanted you to see it in its sort of natural state. One thing which is very useful if you're driving it every day. So here's the key right here. It's quite a good looking little leather key with the unlock button here lock button on the top and the boot open so that's actually really practical the car can be locked and you just press the boot opening button and then the boot will open automatically like that and then you can close it back down by just using the key now if the car's locked it has keyless go very useful every day they usually just have the key in my pocket i just press this button here and the car unlocks there we go i thought it wasn't working at first so the mirrors will come out they're automatically folding in again great when you're parking and then you can swing it open and see the inside it's very weird doing this in my underwear but round the inside of this car now then first thing you do notice when you hop into this is that it still smells new this one i've put nearly six thousand miles on this car full of leather all over the place and just a very very nice place to be it's very big lots of space you've got a big center console around here as you can tell we've got starbucks coffee i've got all sorts of cables this car comes with apple carplay which is lovely you just plug it in here and you can see all your uh, whatsapps that come in you can play your spotify really really useful you've then got this awesome steering wheel with lots of buttons now this i use a lot the voice command on this car is one of the best i've ever witnessed so i just use this if i want to call someone or send a message i just read it out and the voice command will do that very useful every day these different things make your life so much easier they may sound small but having a Harman and Kardon sound system linked to Apple CarPlay, brilliant. Voice record, brilliant. It's got adaptive cruise control, will actually brake and accelerate for you down to zero. Normally they stop at about 40 miles an hour. This will do it all the way down to zero. Great dual zone climate control. And around back, we've even got heated seats and plenty of space. You have a little ski trap, which you can put down, which is lovely. Panoramic roof and just overall a really, really nice place to be. It's got little gadgets, which a car of this price doesn't usually have heated steering wheel, ventilated and heated seats. I would say, however, there are a few little touches which don't feel too, too quality, but overall, I honestly do not think that there is a car around this price range which has little touches, which are really nice. Like normally on the top of the dashboard here, it feels very plasticky. In this car, very nice quality. You've got an Alcantara finish on the headlining. Again, something you usually only find in much, much more expensive cars. All the, the, the switch gear actually feels really nice. Now, there are a few plastics, I would say, for the for these buttons for the climate control could feel slightly nicer and if you spend about double the money it ends up being on these other cars like Panameras they are on a different level but you know you get what you paid for the seats are very comfortable they, they hold you in they're sporty but yet you can use them every day the last touch so important on a car that you drive this often is the boot let me show you that the boot as I said you can open it from the key or you just press the button if I can find it right there so you've got the logos on the back, Stinger GTS. Right now it's full of camera gear, but you have an absolutely massive boot. You can actually put all three of the back seats down. So it goes all the way through. So when I moved to London, for example, we had a Fanatec racing simulator in the back. We had loads of stuff. And this, 
is great if you're, it's a car that you're going to be using every day and lugging stuff around in. The only thing I would say which does make this car a bit tricky to use every day is it's very big, very long and it's fairly wide and it's also a tiny bit low for a car that you want to daily. Not that speed bumps or anything are a big problem but if ever there's a huge pothole or you're driving, trying to just sort of park on a slightly big curb things like that sometimes it will bottom out a bit so those are the only things I would say that have really affected me in daily life it being slightly long slightly large and slightly low but if you're trying to get a good looking car you know you can't really have everything for the price these things are starting not for our 40,000 pounds. Once you've optioned them all up, and this is obviously the one with the bigger engine, you can get a smaller engine petrol and a different array of engines. So if you don't want something as powerful as this, you don't need to get it. Although I will say that the fuel economy is really not that bad. We're gonna hop into the car now and drive, and I'll tell you a bit more of what I think. Right, we're in the Kia, Kia Stinger GT. I mentioned all of the power output and all that stuff earlier, but what's this car actually like to drive? And what's it like to live with? I personally really, really think this is a fantastic car and I'm not being biased at all here. I'll start with a few things I don't like and then go on to the things I like. One of the things I'm not, you know, too sure about, if you're buying a car like this, sporty and quick, it doesn't have that much character necessarily. That's just two things, like it doesn't sound that good. I'm being very harsh on it because I'm coming from someone who's comparing it to cars which are double the money and it fares really well with those cars. It's missing in a few areas, but it definitely pretty much on par with those, and those are 90,000 to 100,000 to even sometimes 150,000 pound cars. For me, it's the only real negative point of this car. The rest of the stuff I'm gonna tell you now is nitpicking, really. Fuel consumption, it's not bad. Over the last 4,513, I can see it on my trip here, miles, I've averaged 25 miles per gallon. Not quite, you know, 40 miles a gall per gallon you'll get on uh, on a bunch of smaller, more usable city cars, but really not that bad for a powerful, big, heavy car like this. If you're trying to be discreet, and this is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you guys are getting your daily drivers for, this car does actually get a fair amount of attention. So that's one thing some people don't like in a daily driver. Um, so I felt like I should probably know that. It doesn't bother me personally, but you know, it does get a lot of looks and it gets a lot of people looking around at me like, that's a Kia. And to be honest, I've been trying to think of other things, you know, I'm, I'm not a massive fan of. I mean, I'm, other cars in this segment sometimes have full digital uh, display dashboards, whereas this is analog. Um, you've got any, have you got any down points you would put? Any negatives on the interior? I wouldn't give it any negative points. What actually. could we say? I mean, the back, there's plenty of space. If I'm, if I'm being picky, yeah. I'll say this doesn't look as it doesn't fit the rest okay. of the car okay okay yeah all right i see what makes this a brilliant day i've really enjoyed this car and Honestly, Kia have done a fantastic job with this. It is a really, really good car to daily. Now, right now, for example, I'm in adaptive cruise control. You don't even need to brake when you're at a traffic light right now on the car, then you just press a little button and it'll move off with the traffic. Things like this, things like all the safety features that you have around the car, make it just so relaxing to drive. It's also really quiet in here. They've put a lot of sound ending in, so when you're in the car, I don't need to talk loud at all to you guys. I'm in the middle of a city, in the middle of traffic. So it's, it's. oh, let me just press that, and off we go. Very, very relaxing to drive. Now that plays into what I said before as a negative, that it's not particularly exciting. So if you're going for the really exciting sort of full-blown hardcore sports car, which you can take five people in like an RS6 or something, this isn't that. But if you're going for a car which has plenty of power that you can drive every day and is not stressful, it's not too loud, but will still get you places quickly, this thing has nailed that. One other down point I've thought of, there is quite a big blind spot uh, in the back. Now you do have blind spot warning lights on the mirrors, which are useful, but when you're looking around and driving around in a city already, that's quite a big car, it does have fairly big blind spots. Everything's simple, everything's very easy to use. You've got your Apple CarPlay connect straight to your phone. You don't need to put the handbrake on and off, it does it automatically for you. Um, all, all the buttons you really use are right here on the steering wheel. You've got your volume, you've got your voice command. Everything's just on your fingertips and simple and intuitive, which you don't have in that many cars. So they've done a really good job on that. Which again, for daily use, I don't want to be fiddling around here to be able to play my music um, and, you know, complicated gear selectors and all of this sort of stuff. None of that here. Plenty of space in the back if you have passengers, which is fantastic because 
in a car like this, you do often have passengers. So it is really nice to be able to have people in the back and they're not squished. As I mentioned, the big boot. It's very comfortable, this car. You've got five different settings. You've got Smart, Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. So you can really kind of decide what kind of mood you're in. I live in Eco most of the time because I don't want to be spending that much petrol. But it's very comfortable, very supple. And as I mentioned, that plays in with uh, it being quite quiet as well. So it's just very usable, very easy to drive. And I think that's what you're really looking for. I've taken this on many long trips, and every time you get out of the car and you just feel like, Oof, all right, fresh, good to go. You don't feel exhausted after a long trip. And that's something I think you, you really look for in a car, which uh, you're gonna be using every day because that's how most people will be using these cars. So I don't know if you can tell, I'm not too, I'm not holding onto the steering wheel too hard. That's because it's also got adaptive steering and lane assist. So effectively it will steer itself through lane. And I, I actually use it a lot and I don't rely on it obviously, but even round town, it's really nice because if you're, if you're sort of, you know, looking at the song or you're just talking to a friend like that, you don't need to sort of be hung up like this and hanging onto the steering wheel too hard. You can be slightly more relaxed, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing is what I do. But overall, such a good car and not just a good car for the money that's just an extra bonus the price of this thing which is outrageous it's a good car full stop which competes with cars which are much more expensive it punches way above its weight and uh, i really think they've done a good job at trying to enter this new segment which kia is trying to enter which is sort of a slightly more luxurious area and you know they've they've done really well the car's perfectly reliable you get a seven year warranty with it um, there are so many pluses to this and yeah maintenance is gonna be really cheap it's a really really good car and they've done really well with it I haven't had any problems with it in the last six months if you're considering this as a daily and you're looking in this price bracket I honestly think it's the way to go I've really enjoyed it and it feels it really feels like you're driving something nice you're in a very comfortable sturdy big car so yeah I'm blabbing on a lot now that's pretty much it. I think we now need to get some food is the last stop. Yep. And then after, well, you're heading off, aren't you? So we'll, we'll, end, we'll end the video in Nando's, which is where I feel like we're going to go. I also want to give a massive shout out. Please, guys, go on Instagram. Follow Oscar right here because uh, he's helped out so much with this video. And we've been on a bit of an adventure and he's lost a drone doing it. So if you know anyone at DJI or you guys are just getting rid of a drone, Oscar's looking for one. So give him a shout. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for helping with this video, dude. Anyways, see you at Nando's. And that's today then. I am exhausted after paddling for ages, looking for the drone late last night. We just smashed our Nando's, and now it's time for you to head to the airport, Oscar. But please comment down below what you thought of this, and hopefully we might be doing more stuff together in the future, in terms of videography and stuff like that. So let us know what you think. And uh, that's my review of the Kia. It's been an absolute pleasure to have it for the last six months. So obviously, a massive thank you to Kia for the loaner. And I'll be back with another video very, very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey! Let's go!